doesn't sound desirable. Why? I'm going to try. I have boyfriends for fraternity so I'm almost last night in Rhode Island, so I had to wake up at 4.30 so I could drive to Scotland and back to Boston for the evening. And be here by 7.30. You are such a camper these days. I know I am. You're an inspiration. You are. You are an inspiration to us all. Do you want me to say anything? Yeah, I'm going to say something. 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 All right, good afternoon. Hi, everybody. Welcome back from lunch. Uh, I hope it was a good one. Uh, this is the student panel portion of Open House. Uh, my name is Paul Kresge. I'm an alum of COM. Uh, this is actually my job for several, several years to actually host this student panel. And every year, I say that I'm going to write a statement and lead with that. And then I wake up 10 minutes before I'm supposed to be here and <laughs> rush and make everyone around me nervous. So I still don't have an opening statement, but welcome. Um, this is uh, always one of my favorite favorite days and portions of the open house right here. Um, this is, like I said, is the student panel. And why I like it is for this reason. The faculty and the staff here are absolutely incredible. And I can't say enough good things about them. I really can't. Um, they've put me in such a good position, uh, both academically when I was here and now in the professional world. But the student panel is something a little bit different. And that's because there's no horse in the race for these students. Um, it's not their job to tell you to come here. It's not their job to say everything that you want to hear. They're here just to say how they feel about the school. And I hope that that can be beneficial. And we'll just jump right into it. Um, so if I could just ask uh, Kate Scott here to lead us off and just introduce the student panel. Okay, so, I mean, you all know me, Kate, uh, PR major, um, and I'm a junior, so let me know if you have questions. <laughs> uh, my name's Will. I was in the Snuggie earlier. <laughs> You're undeclared. You should tell them. I'm undeclared, so I am the most unbiased of the unbiased. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Mariah. I'm majoring currently in advertising. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, my name is Chris. I'm a junior. I'm currently studying film television, and I'm actually a dual degree student in the School of Management studying marketing. Hi, my name is Taylor. I am a sophomore from Atlanta. I don't think I said where I was from earlier. Um, I am majoring in journalism with emphasis in broadcast and a concentration in political science. All right, so this is our student panel, and how this is going to work is if you have a question, please just raise your hand. I'll call on you. Uh, I'll repeat the questions so our student panel can hear it, also so our friends on the webcast can hear it. I've been told this is being put on the internet, so I hope that I'm a cult hero in many foreign countries <laughs> by the end of this. Um, so if anyone wants to lead us off and be brave, uh, I'll take the first question right now. Right here in the corner, yep. I have questions. <laughs> No, no, no it, that, that's not true. It, it is, I promise you I've seen amazing things. How hard is that? How is that? It definitely is. It's a oh. Chris, you're already breaking the rules. 
All right, so the question for anybody that did not hear uh, was in regards to double majoring. Chris is a double major in film and also in the business school, uh, the School of Management, SMG. Uh, and the question was essentially just how difficult is that in terms of workload, uh, personal life, stress? Chris, I, I'm sure you can uh, certainly attest to that. Um, so at Boston University, there's something called the dual degree program, which is <clears throat> if you major in two things in two different schools, you graduate with um, two degrees. So I'll graduate with a degree from the College of Communication and a, a degree from the School of Management. Um, it definitely is very difficult, and the reason why is because it's two extremely different programs where how, how normally it would work is classes overlap. So if you were to say do French um, in the College of Arts and Sciences and do film TV here, um, a lot of the prerequisite courses overlap and they count for both. Um, that's not necessarily the case with the business program. Um, that being said, the business program um, at Boston University does offer a really great minor um, that's a lot easier to, to do and fit into your schedule. Um, I don't want to deter anyone who is planning on doing that because I was a student who was planning on doing that and um, I will be graduating in four years with both uh, degrees. I had to do a couple summer classes, but I mean right now I'm overloading, but I still have two internships um, that I'm also doing at the same time. So <clears throat> it's definitely doable and it's not, um, I wouldn't deter anyone from doing it, but definitely make sure that's something that you personally really want to do because <clears throat> what you get on your degree isn't going to dictate where you're going to be working. Um, it depends on what you do with your four years here. So if you study film television because you love film television, I would recommend doing that because while you're here, you can get involved with so many things, whether it's different production elements, um, producing elements, like if you want to work um, like as a producer on a TV show, or if you want to do, like for me, for instance, I want to work on marketing in the business end of um, the television industry. Um, finding internships like with ABC or with something like that, um, and that's really how you kind of get further. It doesn't necessarily matter exactly what your degree says. It, it depends on what you do with your four years here, but basically the short answer, don't not do it um, if you think it's too hard, but also think about it more, did that make sense? Um, <laughs> think about it in more, more than just the, the dual degree terms. You don't have to do a dual degree or a double major in business. Um, there's so many other things. And there's so many other dual degrees too that you can do in College of Arts and Sciences um, and things like that. That's a lot easier to do and <coughs> give you the same kind of results, so. Well, I was just gonna say also, um, Having, if you bring in like AP or IB credits, anything like that, that can also put you very far ahead. A lot of our dual degree students tend to be people who came in with a semester or even a full year worth of credit already. Um, and so that puts them in a position to have um, a lot more free time with their schedule so they can take on something like a dual degree and still complete it in four years. So it's also very much about your individual situation. If, if you're coming in with those credits, it can make it a lot easier. Um, but then, I mean, some people come in and they're really committed to doing that and they bring in no credits and they take four summer classes every summer and they overload every semester so that they're able to do it. So it's definitely, it also depends on your individual situation. So. And I want to chime in that you won't be doing this alone. Um, there is, there's tons of support within COM. Um, so we have academic advisors who I consider just the best people on COM app in general. Um, and they will be willing to assist you. I would advise for students to try to meet up with them um, as soon as you can once you uh, matriculate in so that you can see you know, how your, your roadmap should be here in COM if you're interested in pursuing a dual degree because there are certain GPA requirements that you have to fulfill. And I mean, it's just easier to meet up with them ahead of time. Yeah, and then that just being said to kind of close it off, <clears throat> one of the reasons why I did choose Boston University is the staff and the faculty here would, I, I would probably say they would literally do backflips for you if you asked them to. Um, I came in here, I was so hell-bent on doing both of the degrees, and they were like, it's gonna be a little bit tricky, but they sat me down because they knew that's what I wanted to do, and they literally planned out my entire course load every single semester for four years, because the amount of classes I'm taking, I should be here for like five years maybe, because I came in with zero, <laughs> zero credits. Um, high school. Um, <laughs> Um, so I, a, anything that you'd ever want to do at Boston University, the, the faculty here will sit you down and they'll make sure, um, they can make your dreams come true. So. <laughs> All great points, guys. Thank you. Do we have any faculty or staff that are interested in doing backflips at this point in time? <laughs> Maybe in September? I'm looking at you, Dean Sabot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never mind. You guys should convince her to do that on the first day of Com 101. <laughs>
All right, uh, we'll take question number two. Here, I have one. Right in the middle. Um, what kind of extracurricular activities are there on campus? That is a, that is a great question. Um, the question was, what kind of extracurricular activities are there on campus? Um, I know the people up here on the panel uh, are involved in a lot of them. So <laughs> take it away, whoever wants to start. Um, I am involved in Greek life. I'm a member of sorority. I am also involved with the Public Relations Student Society of America um, and the annual conference that they put on every year. I've been on the planning committee for that. Um, I'm also in the Fashion and Retail Association and I'm a ambassador coordinator. You guys should all be ambassadors. Um, I am a part of Stage Troop, which is the drama club on campus. Uh, I'm also part of Liquid Fun, which is the improv comedy group on campus. Com com <laughs> <laughs> because we are calm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a part of the Organic Gardening Club. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm currently a part of the Bostones. It's an acapella group on campus, which go acapella. It's so good. We just had our show last night. Baka, awesome, pitch perfect. <laughs> um, and I also have done things with On Broadway, which is the musical theater group on campus. And actually, for one of our Boston show, we had Liquid Fun as our intermission guest, and they're amazing, yep. very amazing. <laughs> um, I'm involved with a bunch of random things, one of which is I am on the Quidditch team. Um, <clears throat> we just went to Orlando, Florida, and we competed in the World Cup, came top 16 out of 1,200 teams in the world, so. Um, thanks. Um, <laughs> so Quidditch is a thing. Um, so I'm part of that. I am also part of a co-ed business fraternity on campus, um, which is really fun. Uh, I work on Bay State, which is a soap opera that we have on campus. So I even if you're not a film TV major, you can get involved, whether it's writing or acting or something like that. Um, and our, our, I think the tagline for the show is Sex, Drugs, Murder. So it's obviously a great soap opera. Um, <laughs> what else do I do? Oh, I'm an admissions ambassador. I give tours. Um, I probably do some other random things. I just can't remember right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I am the news director for WTBU News, um, which is WTBU Radio's news program. I am on the e-board for BUTV10. So I hope all of you guys join both. WTBU and BUTV. Um, on BUTV, uh, well, for starters, WTBU is a student-run radio program. Uh, BUTV 10 is the student-run television program. And I am the content director for uh, the political talk show called On That Point. Next semester, I will be um, one of the co-EPs for that show. So you definitely should join on board. Um, I am also a uh, com ambassador in which, um, I don't know if Kate described it earlier, um, when you guys start off here, you will have the guidance or you will have mentors kind of sort of, um, of students who've been here before or students who are currently here and upperclassmen or whatnot. And um, I will be one of them along with Kate and Will. <laughs> and um, so yeah, if you have any questions when you get here, it's great. Yeah, so basically what I just, well, I guess we were trying to show with this is at Boston University, there's literally everything from A to Z. There's everything from accounting club to Zeta Beta Tau, Greek <laughs> life. Um, that was a good one. That was good. Yeah, I've been practicing. <laughs> um, but, but actually there's everything from like fun, quirky clubs like Quidditch, people watching. There's like a culinary club on campus. Um, oh, you guys haven't heard about the, oh, we'll talk. Um, oh, the hug. The, the people, the free hugs club, things like that, to other professional clubs, um, like accounting club or PRSSA or advertising club, um, film society, things like that. So there's everything you can ever imagine being involved with, you can, and if you can't find something, it's really easy to get something started. I think you need like five students to start a club or 10 students and a faculty advisor to get funding. So it's it's super easy to get any anything you could ever imagine from LARPing to, I don't know. Yeah. There are over 400 clubs within the university in general. And so like you said, there's a big, big diversity. And so it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, I completely just lost my train of thought. Well, no, no. OK, I was just going to say no. What, I No, oh, I remember it. One of the things I was going to say, too, is try to balance, too, like your career 
extracurriculars with like fun things because you can like I definitely came in and I was like okay I have to join PRSA and I have to be on PR Advance and I have to do all of this stuff that's going to leave me to have a fantastic career in four years but also like call just about to have fun and I feel like all especially in in com we're all very driven so we all get involved in all those things but like you just need something to relax with so like acapella or stage trip or like one of the something that's like creative is always a nice like outlet to have have fun with in addition to your <laughs> academics. I don't know. Uh, you can also start your own club. Um, I'm in the process of starting a people named Will Club. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going very well, but, <laughs> but if you don't have a club, if there, if there isn't a club on campus, you can always start one. <laughs> All right, next question. <laughs> I have nothing to add to that. You guys couldn't have handled that any better. <laughs> On that note, uh, <laughs> next question. <laughs> All the way in the back, uh, right here. Yep. Can you, uh, a lot of us that are still making a decision, can you speak to why you chose BU over some of the other schools you might have had to choose? That's a great question, and I'm glad that we get to touch on that. Uh, pretty much every student panel, someone brings that up. So the question was, how did the, uh, the decision-making process go? For the students up here, um, there are a lot of great schools out there that many of you are probably looking at, um, right up there with BU. And how did you guys make that tough decision? Um, I can recall like, applying for college being the most stressful year in my life. Um, so I, I, I couldn't even imagine, like, or I can kind of sympathize with all of you guys that are, are currently trying to decide. For me, since the third grade, I knew that I wanted to go to one particular school. And um, senior year, I just changed my mind completely due to um, going to a college fair and just noticing that that school just wasn't my fit. And so I um, saw someone from BU who was stationed at the same college fair, and they were so open to just talking to me about like the about camp campus life and about all the things that I could get involved here. And I, I'm a sucker for videos. And so I must say that I was suckered into watching a video that just really made me, it, I, I was, I was, it was, it was done. I, I said that I was gonna go here. And um, I, I mean, I, I, I took a risk because I didn't, I didn't visit BU before making my decision. Um, but it's a, it's a risk that I would never take back. Um, because here, to me, what, what distinguishes uh, BU from all the other schools that I mean I had on my list NYU Syracuse Northwestern Emory University um, are the faculty members are is the community element here and I guess I guess to kind of just bring in a more personal situation what really showcased that to me more than ever um, was the Boston Marathon um, and everything that happened with the reporting for it I spent countless hours with tons of journalism students going out to um, FBI press uh, press conferences and going to the cathedral to interview potential um, mayoral candidates and et cetera, and having the guidance from professors here to consider us as colleagues and talk to us and help us through the field is just something that I can't say that every student at other universities other universities will have. And I'm a sophomore, and I'm saying that, so it just makes me wonder within the next two years what else will I see. Awesome. <coughs> Um, for me, and I'm, I'm sure that there's several other students um, kind of sitting down right now who are in the same situation. For me, uh, my decision came down to my two top choices. I had gotten accepted to both uh, Boston University and NYU um, for film TV in particular. And there are some people who are laughing because I'm guessing they're in the same situation yeah. and I'm going to speak to you and everyone <laughs> else is like that. Um, no, but um, in, in all seriousness, it came between that and it was an extremely hard decision at the time. Um, when I was thinking about it, and it stressed me out, got very little sleep over it. Um, visited both the schools, both schools several times. I think I visited NYU like three or four times. Visited BU six times, um, <laughs> mostly because I loved the university. I, I honestly loved the university and wanted to see it and like get all the nooks and crannies before I even made my my uh, decision. But when I came here, um, and I was I was visiting, it felt like a place like home. Boston is an amazing city. Um, first off, that's the first reason. Um, Boston's an amazing city. 
It's super walkable, easy to get around. So many college students, because there's so many colleges here. You're constantly meeting new people. There's a really young vibe. So many startups, great places to work, great places to learn. Um, it's an amazing city. There's so much going on. You can do something different every hour of the day, every day of the week. Um, it's, it's, it's a great city. Um, one of the big reasons why I did end up choosing it is, like I said, the faculty. They will do anything if you ask them nicely. They will help you find an internship. They will connect you with insiders in different industries. They will do everything you ask for. Um, we have the best faculty I could I could ever imagine. Um, for example, just a, a story off of that, um, my professor right now in my creative producing class, I'm taking a, a television producing class, um, we had to do a project on reality shows and we had to make a, a fake reality show. And so one day in class she goes, um, so would you guys want to maybe pitch your shows to Andy Cohen from Bravo? And we were like, um, yeah. <laughs> so we all kind of designed our reality shows towards Bravo. Um, we got to Skype in Andy Cohen. We got to pitch our show to the Andy Cohen from Bravo. If anyone, does anyone watch Bravo? Oh, I guess I'm the only one. No, <laughs> um, no. Um, and actually it went really well. Um, we're currently, my group for the project is currently represented by Beyonce's lawyer, and we're talking with Bravo right now um, about second steps with that. And none of that, none of that would have would have happened if it wasn't for, um, if it wasn't for, for this class um, and this university. Um, and then just to kind of close it off, I know I've been talking for a while, and I'm sorry, um, <laughs> but I've never once in my entire life regretted my decision. And I, I, I tell you that honestly, I've never, a after I made my decision to come to Boston University over in New York, um, I never once thought that I'd made the, the wrong decision. I'm so in love with the city and with the school and with the program and with the faculty and all the students here. Um, it's a great city, it's a great starter city. Um, I can't say enough positive things. Yeah. Um, Oh, I, I, I say starter city because I like to, to think of it as, it's not a city where you're constantly surrounded by skyscrapers. You can kind of walk around and there's tons of parks and trees and families and, mm -hmm. and things like that. But at the same time, you can walk 10 minutes downtown and be surrounded by skyscrapers and be surrounded by the T and by public transportation and stuff like that. So it's a great way to get acclimated to a larger city living, um, but still kind of have that friendly small town feeling. But sorry, I just talked for a long time. <laughs> Um, I was a big fan of College Board. I'm sure you guys are on that website a lot. And you know how they have the quiz where you can put literally every nitpicky thing about a school you could ever want? And I did that quiz with every little nitpicky thing. And the only school that showed up was Boston University. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't think, and I don't, that's not what made my decision. But I think that goes to show that Boston University has so many options, because I actually originally was in the School of Management, and I wanted to make sure that I could uh, try a dual degree with advertising if I wanted, because that was another thing I was interested in. I wanted to minor in theater. I wanted to make sure that I could join as many student groups as possible and be able to do it all, because they had the options available. And also, I definitely chose Boston University, because we're, we're here to learn, and it's school, and it's academic-focused. But I think what's unique about this school, and es especially Calm, is that everything you do goes towards your career in the future. Every project you're doing, I know for advertising, every project we do, they, the teachers make sure that you can put it in your portfolio. They make sure that it'll benefit you somewhere in the future. It will get you that internship. They're, they force you to start a blog, but you know it's gonna be a great talking point and you'll probably get the internship because of it. And I, a lot of other schools just did not give me that vibe and did not tell me about all the career-related things and how many, like the Career Services Center in here is amazing. They'll sit down with you and talk about your resume for I don't even know how long and then by the end you're like, wow, I didn't even realize I did all this stuff and I look really impressive right now <laughs> because of them. And I just think that's a really, really, really important thing when choosing a school, that you have a lot of options, a lot of activities, a beautiful campus, so clean and classy, and I love it. I want to stay here forever. I'm from Pennsylvania, so we don't, not, we're not very clean or classy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm from Sweet Valley, so it's the middle of nowhere, farms all around. Um, <laughs>
<laughs> but basically, this is the best place on earth, in my opinion. Uh, my story of choosing Boston University is more of a higher power phenomenon. Um, <laughs> I was visiting here, I guess it was two Junes ago. Two, yeah, it's two Junes ago. Okay, we'll go with that. Um, and I was visiting Tufts, BC, and BU. And I think I visited Tufts and BC on a Monday. And it was like raining and nasty and everything. And then on Tuesday, visited BU, and it was beautiful. And then that night, I was sitting in my hotel room eating a cannoli. <laughs> <laughs> and the Bruins won the Stanley Cup. And like riots emptied into the streets and like police showed up and I was like sitting in my window like, oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> like a junior in high school, just like, oh, this is incredible. <laughs> and like from that moment, <laughs> That single distinct moment of like ricotta cheese all over my face, <laughs> I knew that <laughs> that I would have cannoli all over my face at BU once more for <laughs> four more years. Okay. How do I even follow that? Um, okay, <laughs> I'll just go with the honest story, I guess. Um, well, I also was between BU and NYU, um, so I can completely sympathize with those of you who are in that position. Um, but what it came down to for me was realizing that I wanted to go to NYU because I wanted to live in New York, not because I wanted to go to NYU. And I wanted to go to BU because I loved BU and I loved Boston. And that was just a much stronger thing and a much better reason in my mind to come here. Um, you, if, if that is like anywhere near any of your like minds, um, I'm interning in New York this summer. Um, so the whole like New York living dream thing can still happen and it, I mean, I'm ha it's happening for me this summer. Um, and I, like Chris, have never once um, regretted my decision or thought, what if I had gone to NYU? Um, the amount of just incredible opportunities I've had here, um, and even just like in my very first week. I mean, I, like, I don't know if any of you guys watched Calm Life that Jason, Alexa, and Abby and I are on, but I mean, I was uh, offered the spot on that show the day before classes started, I think, or a couple days before classes started. So like that was just like the very first like my the very first thing I was like okay like I this is what I do now and like now I'm got that just like immediately got me involved in calm and made it feel like such more of a home and I just think about had I gone um, not just to NYU but any of the other schools I applied to like I just don't think that any of the that type of like very personal opportunities would have happened um, and I. I just think Boston is a fantastic place to go to school because like Chris said and other people said, there's so many college kids here. Um, and it's just like, it's such a young city and there's so many, like all of the museums and the aquarium and all of those kinds of things have like college nights. And um, it's a lot of stuff that happens here is just really catered towards young people. And um, just also like being at BU, you are five seconds from like uh, literally on the T, it takes 10 minutes to get to Back Bay and like, 15 to 20, depending on if the T is being temperamental to get to government center. So it's like you're in the city, but at the same time, we have such a campus and community feel here that I didn't get at a lot of the other schools I applied to. So um, I just hope you guys have felt that community and that uh, campus feel as you've been here today. So apologies to anyone that was hoping to get a cannoli later. Um, apologies to anyone that is joining us from dirty, dirty Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, just to, I'm actually going to throw my two cents in on this one, I think. Um, as Chris and Kate pointed out, Boston is an incredible city. And I know probably five to ten people just off the top of my head that transferred to BU while I was here and are now really, really good friends. I don't know anyone that transferred out. Um, and honestly, you might have aspirations to go to LA, to New York, to Chicago. But Boston is, hands down, the best college city in the country. Not even close. Um, and I think I can speak to that. I think everyone here can speak to that. It's a great, great environment. There are so many schools. You're going to meet so many different people. It is an absolutely fantastic place to be. Um, with that, uh, we'll move on to another question. These are very quiet today. I'm going to have to start asking questions myself. Right there in the middle. Great question. Um, the question was, 
for any incoming freshmen, um, is there something that they should be aware of that you might have found tricky, difficult, stressful, one obstacle that you might have overcome when you first got to BU? Well, I'm from Atlanta. And um, I really never um, had been around an environment that was this cold ever. <laughs> So I'm still adjusting. <laughs> the winter never ends. <laughs> but um, I think that, I, I, don't, I don't know, I know for a lot of people it is climate that is a big of a, a big adjustment for some. Because ironically enough, a lot of people come from, um, from California to uh, BU. And so uh, I'm not alone when I'm like someone from a heated environment coming to a northern area that's a bit cooler or colder. Um, other than that, I... I don't, I, I mean, some people would probably, I feel like the response that people would be thinking is classes, but the professors offer such a great, uh, great like um, office hour type component that you get acclimated to their structure immediately. Um, uh, by the way, all of our professors have office hours and which um, are basically, yeah, they're every week and you can just stop by and talk to them about any assignment. And um, that's just a great way just to find out like w how they think and it's great to tap into, tap into their mind and get a better connection with them. But for me, personally, it was climate. <laughs> like, I'm still getting adjusted to it. And even like when it rains, I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> but but I, I mean, I love it. Like, I, it's, it's so pretty to see like the, the changes in seasons, um, especially like along Bay State Road. It's, it's incredible. Um, I would say uh, at the, like, the very beginning, and I mean this was like days one and two, um, adjusting to living with a completely like new person that you've never met and all of a sudden you're sleeping five feet away from is like kind of, it's it's like a very unique experience that like you don't find anywhere else. And um, so your fresh, like your fr that sort of like freshman year situation um, was a little bit, I guess, worrisome for me when I first got here. Um, also because my roommate uh, freshman year who, I'm still living with, so it obviously worked out very well for us, but she had done FISOP, which I don't know if you guys are aware, but it's like a, a week-long community service uh, opportunity that you have the uh, before classes start, um, and so she had done that, and you're in a FISOP group, and so they got, uh, she was really close with her FISOP group and had all these friends, and I was like, I don't know anyone, and like, isn't your roommate supposed to be the person you like latch onto because you don't know anyone and you like feel like you don't want to go to the dining hall by yourself, but she already had friends, so I was like, damn, like, what do I do now? So that was, like, a little bit iffy, but um, then I just asked a girl on my floor if she wanted to go shopping at Newberry, and, like, she's still a friend of mine. So I think you just sort of have to, like, get over that hump of this is, like, really uncomfortable because you don't know anybody, and you're living with this person that you've known for about 24 hours, um, and you've, you know, obviously always lived at home with your family before that, so it's kind of, like, a weird situation. Um, but just everyone's in that boat, and I think I just had to keep reminding myself of that, so just put yourself out there and introduce yourself to people and be awkward. I know people my freshman year just sat in the Warren Towers elevators playing songs on their guitar, like, and just went up and down with people as they came and went. And they, like, I honestly, like, still know who those people are because they did that. Like, if I see them walking down the street, I'm like, oh, you're that kid that sat in the elevator that day. <laughs> and so just, like, honestly, things like that is, it sounds so dumb, but, like, you make friends that way, and especially in college, like, your, your very first year, so. Yeah. Um, I also think a big adjustment, which is maybe be specific, um, Coming into to college, I had a, a kind of an idea of how things were going to go based on my experiences in high school and based on other schools that I'd visited my friends at, where if I visited my friend who was a nursing major, let's say at some other school in Boston, um, and I like was hanging out with her and I met her friends, they were all nursing majors, it was very clicky for lack of better words, and it was definitely like that in high school too, where like certain groups of people only talk to certain other groups of people, student athletes, things like that. Um, here at Boston University, you're constantly meeting so many different people, not only at different schools within Boston University, but different colleges and universities within the greater Boston area. That I have friends who are in Greek life, I have friends who are on the Quidditch team, I have friends who work on Bay State upstairs, I have friends who work on Sergeant's Choice Meals, which are like the, the healthy al dining alternatives on campus. I have people, friends who are pre-med, neuroscience, um, things like that. You're constantly meeting so many different people where it's not that you have like different tiers of students um, or different cliques within Boston University, but you're just, 
I don't know, we're like one, we're one school where you get to meet everyone in all these different programs through our liberal arts um, kind of setup, and and that that's great. It's something that I wasn't expecting at all, and that took a little bit of adjusting too, because I was convinced that I'd only be hanging out with film TV majors, and I'm like friends with everyone on this panel, and they're not all film TV majors. <laughs> Um, and outside of here, like the other activities that I'm involved with and everything. So I think that was that was something that I, I was surprised about and I had to kind of adjust a little bit and realize that it wasn't just me and film TV majors. Uh, laundry? <laughs> <laughs> okay, is anyone from Pennsylvania here? I'm so sorry, it's a beautiful state, but you guys will know the PSATs you taking them? So my school was very focused around the PSATs, and so our writing was very, they, they just taught us how to write just for that, sort of, so that the school could get a little bump and get some money. And so coming to college, I had this specific way that I had learned all through high school because of the way my high school had taught me to. And I, I did perfectly well, and I, I learned well, but coming here, it's definitely an adjustment to one, be on your own, so you don't have, a, your teachers don't really nag you. Obviously, they'll reach out and help you if you need, um, or you can go to them all the time, but it's, it, for me, it was a big adjustment to actually say, oh, wow, I have no idea how to write a paper because my high school focused so much on the PSAT, so I, I went to my teacher's office hours, I'm like, hi, I'm so sorry. Uh, what you said made no sense to me, and they, they're they just so nice. They never judge, because there's so many people here that come from so many different backgrounds. There's so many international students. There there are a lot of people from California, I've realized. they like, I would stay in California. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's amazing here. Um, <laughs> um, and there's just so many different ways of learning and ways that people have learned, and BU makes such a great effort to make sure that you are able to keep up, that you are able to learn, that you, if, if you have this specific way of learning, they will help you so much with that, and they'll, they'll reach out to you if they see that you're struggling. And again, the faculty, like comms faculty, I, I, yeah, they'll do backflips, they really will. I, I can't even express how much that all the faculty has helped me um, with adjusting, one, because I came from SMG, so that was even another transition, and they're just so kind here and so understanding, because there's so many different types of people here, which is an amazing thing. I, I love it so much. I would definitely throw time management out there as an obstacle to overcome as a freshman. Um, it's a very different world coming to college and realizing that you might have every afternoon on Tuesday and Thursday free, and it's not best spent playing Guitar Hero and eating chocolate-covered pretzels, this guy. Um, <laughs> so you definitely have a lot of time available to you between classes to really figure out what you want to do in college. It might be extracurricular. You might have time to pick up a part-time job. But it's definitely something to be aware of when you first get here because it's quite easy to sort of fall into that safety bubble of I go to class and then I go home. And you have so many opportunities in front of you with a lot of time to do them, especially freshman year when you're just getting started out, I think. Um, so I'd definitely say be aware of that and, and take advantage of it that you have that time available. Can I, yeah, I just want to add something to that real quick, too. Um, one of the other things is because obviously coming from high school, I mean, you have class, what, like 7.30 to 2.30 every day, whatever time it is. Um, but here, because you can have classes that are once a week, twice a week, three times a week, or if you have a class that has a discussion, it might be four times a week. Um, so you also, it's really important, I think, to learn like how you prefer to take the, your classes. I've, just in my personal experience, I like having less class for longer periods of time. So I try to plan my schedule around um, a way that that works for me and that I'm only really in class, um, you know, twice, two days or three days a week. The other thing is if you know that if you have a big break from say like 11 to two o'clock and you're not, you have then class at two o'clock, I know I will not go to that class because I will take a nap or get distracted by something else and be like whatever, like I don't wanna go. So it's also really important I think to learn like how you, how you best learn and how you are gonna 
uh, be successful in your classes um, because there is so much freedom. And like obviously first semester it's hard because you just sort of plan the classes based on what's available and what you need to take. But after that, really like figure out how you best like learn because I think that's important. Great point, Kate. Uh, question right here. <laughs> the question, which is a fun one, is what are the freshman don'ts at BU? Okay, I have two very big pet, well, I have one really big pet peeve and then I have another one. One, people kind of make fun of freshmen when they call CAS CAS, so like try to avoid that because that's not right. Um, the other one, COM is the only acronym that we like actually say the phonetic like saying of it. The other one is if people are doing laundry and they're, what? Oh, Shaw, sorry. Okay, fine. <laughs> Whatever. It's not Cass. Anyway, <laughs> when you're doing laundry, um, if you go down and say, I don't know, the dryer, there's someone's clothes are in the dryer, but it just finished, give them like at least 10 minutes to come get their laundry because it's really annoying when you come down and someone's put your laundry on the floor and it's still warm, so you know it couldn't have been left in there for that long. So just like have some courtesy in the laundry room, you know? Because that's like really frustrating. Everyone's like, like Will said, we're all still learning how to do our own laundry, so like... <laughs> I do mine every six weeks, so like I totally understand where you're coming from. Like, <laughs> I like I go as long as absolutely possible until I'm out of something. No, I'm serious because I hate doing laundry, but it's also just really frustrating to come downstairs and someone's like throwing my clean towels on the ground, and it's like that was rude, you know. This is not an endorsement for six weeks between laundry. It's cycles. not. I. Yeah. <laughs> and CAS cast might be the, the main factor there. I'm glad you brought that one up. But, and this one kind of goes for everyone. Freshmen aren't the only people that do this. But for some odd reason, people have it in their mind that they own proper, like they have ownership of their seating arrangement in their classes. So if you start sitting in a certain seat, seat area um, at the beginning of the semester, that will typically be your, your seat for the rest of that, that semester. So just have that in mind, because if you get up and you go and sit in someone else's seat, they will give you the deaf stare. <laughs> like, or they, I have a friend who literally will leave work early to get to her class 15 minutes in advance so she can get a certain seating area. So people literally, they, they take their seating arrangement very seriously. Um, I, on the other hand, I, I have a class in this, in this lecture hall my bit of advice for freshmen is to sit as close to the front as you can. One, because it can get very distracting if you're sitting in the back and you're not paying attention. Two, the professor really see, he notices you or she notices that you're there. And so like, um, it's, it's great to interact with them, especially during office hours. If you had a pro if you had like a certain um, area of their lecture that you didn't understand, they'll know that you were there. <laughs> and so you can kind of just pick up on it. Um, so like, just sit as close as you can. Um, I typically like to sit like at least three or four rows back. So that's just a bit of advice for freshmen. Uh, this is kind of advice for everyone, I guess, but um, there's a band playing outside. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, when you're crossing the street, make sure you look for bikers. I'm a biker, so like, if I run into you, it's gonna hurt. Um, <laughs> and like, pedestrians seem to think that they're invincible when there's no cars coming and think that Everyone's gonna stop for them, but it's not always the case. So just a heads up. Also, if you're a biker, please be wary of the light so that you won't hit those the innocent pedestrian <laughs> pedestrian walking down come ass. Wait. Also, just to add on to the whole like transportation thing. Um, let people get off the T or the bus or the BU bus before you get on because it's really really frustrating when you're trying to get off the T and it's just like everyone's coming at you. And that's more of just like life advice. This one's sort of for all students, but I, I feel like freshmen do it the most. Check the weather before you go outside, because if you're wearing tiny little shorts and flip-flops and everyone else still has their parkas on, it's, it's not that you're going to get judged, because it's a judge-free zone, but there'll be some weird stares. You're going to get cold. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah one, you're going to freeze. <laughs> Yeah, that's just a big thing I see with a lot of freshmen or like stiletto heels to class. There's no need. There's no need for those. Unless you like you have, unless you're going out a meeting. <laughs> he wears them all the time. <laughs> unless you have like some sort of meeting that requires you to wear stiletto heels right after class is just, there's a lot of cobblestone. A lot of cobblestone. And I think too, just 
don't come in with a freshman mentality. And by that, I mean, don't like write yourself off originally. As a junior, I can tell you, like in high school, it's kind of easier to tell like, oh, that person's probably a freshman, probably a sophomore, probably a junior. When you come to college, you have to think we're all basically done growing. We all look the same. Nobody's gonna be able to know that you're a freshman just because you're walking around. Um, so don't kind of think that just because you are a freshman that you're kind of in that um, kind of zone because like, as I can tell, like the people said, if you all took off your lanyards now, I would not be able to tell if you guys were college freshmen, sophomores, juniors, it, it'd be very difficult for me. So just don't kind of let that limit yourself um, no, is a big one. No roll jack bags. Oh my God, no. Unless you have a heart condition or something. <laughs> That's not true. I've had roll jack bags. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just put the blood <laughs> 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 Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, another question? We got time for a couple more. Sure, right here. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, the question was, do people normally move off campus as they become juniors and seniors or earlier? What's sort of the housing process after freshman year when you're required to be in the BU dorms? Um, OK, well, I'm a, so I'm a junior, uh, as I've said before. Um, but I, so I still live on campus. And I've decided that I'm going to live on campus all four years. Um, housing is guaranteed. So that, I mean, that's great. Um, a lot of people choose to live off campus because, to be honest, it can be cheaper than BU housing. Um, especially, I mean, I think I paid, um, like, to live in my suite last year. That was just, like, a room. It was, like, bedrooms and a bathroom. The same as, like, what my friends paid to have a full apartment. So, that I mean, it can, you can definitely find cheaper housing if that's, like, a big thing. Um, but I think something that people who move off campus sometimes forget is that you sort of do it at your own risk. So I, one of my best friends lives off campus and she has had mice literally all year. And she calls people and brings people in and her um, super just like doesn't really care. So that's just like something you kind of have to like keep in mind. Um, I like sort of the like safety of being on campus and I am currently living in um, the student village buildings which are the high rise uh, dorms down the street. So I'm in what we call Stuvi, uh, Stuvi One. Um, so it's all, it's juniors and seniors only. It's all four person apartments. So it's four bedrooms, a living room, a kitchen, and two bathrooms. And um, one of the nice things too is like, I'm probably not gonna live somewhere really nice like this for a while. So I'm gonna milk it while I'm here. And my parents are paying for it, so <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, it's definitely an option. Like I know people who moved off sophomore year. Um, I think most people who decide to move off tend to do it junior and senior year. There's so much housing in the area though. I mean, especially, so basically like the neighborhood to the south of us is called Brookline. Um, and that's like a very residential area. So a lot of people live there. And then also um, Alston is a neighborhood to the west of campus. And that's uh, pretty residential as well. So that's kind of the two areas that people tend to move off um, campus to. Um, if they decide, and a lot of people will either live in apartment buildings or they're also, they may rent a house with uh, friends or there's like a ton of different options for that, so. Yeah. And I'm unfortunately paying for school by myself, but I still live on campus and it's so worth it because also of the convenience. Yeah. You're right next to your classes. Like if I wanted to get a nice apartment in Alston for around the same price that Stuvie is, that's like an extra 10 minutes to my commute to my class. This way I can I can wake up, I'm right next to the places where I work, I'm right next to the T-line, there's the BU police that are always out for safety reasons, there's everything on ComAv. So I would say convenience also is a really, really huge thing about living on campus. Yeah, and I guess just a quick plug for our housing too, in 2009 I believe, our student villages got rated by CNN and Yahoo as the best dorms in America, so holla. <laughs> <laughs> And no, but like I have floor to ceiling windows that look out over the city and that's like what I wake up to every day. Like I look out my window and I'm like, oh, it's a beautiful day in the city today. And like literally it's, I see the entire, I can see like the state house, like gold dome, like from my yeah, bedroom it's window. Actually rated it's the, ridiculous. The best views in Boston by a lot of publications. So Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. And if you do want to stay on campus, housing is guaranteed by BU all four years. So it really comes down to personal preference. Um, great options at BU if you decide to stay for throughout your, uh, your career here. Yeah, it's one of the few schools in Boston, because it's very hard to secure four years of housing in Boston because of housing costs and property values and things like that. We're one of the few schools that can guarantee it for four years, so that's a, a really big thing. We've got time for a couple more questions, it looks like. Uh, right here in front. Uh, what's on your bucket list? 
I like it. Uh, the question was, what's on your bucket list for the remainder of college, uh, for those of you that are graduating sooner rather than later, or those that still have three more years? I think for me, um, my internships in PR have really been focused in sort of like the hospitality lifestyle industries. Um, and so it's exposed me to the fantastic restaurant scene that we have here. And like also like um, there's a really big uh, scene for like craft cocktails and like fancy drinks. And I recently became of age. So that's sort of on my bucket list for the next um, year and a half, I guess, is to, no, just to like explore all the like fantastic restaurants and like, I mean, we have, world-renowned chefs and like, I don't know, it's just, it's kind of like, I would much prefer to like put on like a cute outfit and like go like somewhere nicer with my friends than like to go to a house party or something. You know what I mean? So like, I don't know. I, that's, I, that's like on my bucket list for me just because I, I just think it's a really unique scene that we have here. And like obviously other cities have great restaurants as well, but um, I don't know, we have world-renowned chefs and like, just like great places to go eat all around the city, um, totally different types of food and like all that. So I think that's on my bucket list is more to just like get out and like do that. Also now that I have like more money than I did freshman year and can like buy dinner and stuff. Um, there's a publication called hercampus.com and <laughs> they have something called Campus Cutie. <laughs> and if any of you are willing to make a nomination, <laughs> Um, I haven't gone to a Red Sox game yet, and I hate myself for that, and I really want to do that. I'm a junior, so, and I'm going to London in the fall, so I only have one semester left in the end of this to do that. I want to go whale watching. I want to go on a ski trip. I want to I wanna do it all, and I feel it's so funny because everything's so close to you, so, but you don't even realize if you just take, like, two more steps, what's there. So I, d I really want to try to cover everything around here. Um, so Taylor and I actually competed in a Mr. and Miss BU pageant. We were Mr. and Miss Com. <laughs> um, thanks. And world peace. Um, April 25th. Wait, yeah, perfect date. No. Um, so we actually had that question that we had to do um, beforehand. And so some of the things on my bucket list included throwing a dinner party with Sally Field, Carrie Walsh, and Christy Yamaguchi. <laughs> so if I can get that done, that'd be awesome. Um, but for Boston in particular, I really want to bump into, if anyone's like kind of in tune with Boston culture and life yet, um, Boston Tweet is a, he's like the most famous Boston Twitter. He tweets like all the, the inside things, like what's happening, different festivals, different cool things that are happening around Boston. So if you follow him, you know, like he just travels around and does this on his own. Um, and kind of finds all the cool places and things to do in Boston. I really want to run into him or meet him or accidentally bump in. I haven't met him yet. Uh -oh. No, oh. we have to call him up sometimes. I know, and I've never, <laughs> I've never gotten to meet him yet. So that's on my bucket list. I just want to see the guy behind this awesome thing. Um, so yeah, Tom, I want to meet him. Um, that's on my list. I also, much like Kate, I have like uh, places to eat um, bucket list. And basically, the the food here. The thing about Boston, like I was saying, is there's so much to do. It's not, like I know a lot of other students are probably looking at schools maybe like Ithaca or Syracuse or things like that where your life kind of revolves around the campus. Here we have an entire city at your disposal. At your disposal. Um, so you can easily go out to eat or go to a museum or go to a festival or go to a show. Um, so that's definitely on my bucket list to do more things like that. Like for example, my freshman year I went to a murder mystery um, thing that was right off of the Boston Common in an old-fashioned brownstone. It was a, tr I think, 1980s or 1880-themed um, murder mystery party, which was really cool. Not 1980s. <laughs> um, that that'd summer. be different. Um, so it's a lot of fun, um, where you get to like act with the actors and kind of solve the mystery. So I guess on my bucket list is to find more things like that and do those too. So. Okay, I just made a new bucket list real quick. I really want to start a 1980s murder mystery. <laughs> themed club. And you're all invited. You're all invited. <laughs> Please come to our showings. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I um, came in with a bucket list and it's weird because the majority of the things that are were on my initial bucket list are checked off. And it's kind of like weird because like there's I really just wanted to explore Boston and I've had those opportunities through like 
taking a beat reporting class where I have to go to the state house constantly to speak with people. And that was like a, a few of those people were uh, individuals were on my bucket list to meet and I've been able to have great conversations with them. But a lot of things that are on my bucket list actually involve interviewing, ironically enough. <laughs> and so um, I well, actually, I don't know if any of you guys were able to um, ride the T here or not or if have been on the MBTA, but there's this guy, he's the voice of the T. He's like, the next stop is East Campus. <laughs> and so I just would love to just talk to this the guy in his interview him eventually. I think that would be interesting. Like, <laughs> like he literally, like he's so awesome. He's an incredible voice. And I just wanted to sit there and just, uh, just. <laughs> he's, just, he's so awesome. Um, I, I, I've all, like, I love basketball. Um, I'm awful at playing it, but um, I would love to go to a Celtics game at some point. Um, and I've never been outside of the U United States, so I am so excited about potentially interning, I mean, or uh, studying abroad and potentially interning at my dream place, which would be CBS, uh, CBS London, and so um, through Com, like they have internship programs um, when you go abroad, and so I'm just I'm so excited about about the future, and hopefully I can put more on my bucket list because to me it's not necessarily that when I think of a bucket list, it's like stuff that you have to wait until you get like old and ancient to start to be able to do, or until your senior year of equivalent um, in Com, but like to me it's just like things that you want to experience. And it's not, I don't even know what to equate it with. It's more of like, if you saw like a bike or something and you just kept trucking, kept trucking, um, it's more of like that ride. So what do I want to see on my ride? And I'm just excited about the things that I've been able to, I've been able to cycle through and hope that more things will come. The, uh, the bucket list question actually reminded me of a freshman don't. Um, in the middle of Marsh Plaza, there is the BU seal, which is big and round and metal and you can't really miss it. Do not walk over that. Uh, you do not walk on it while you're at BU. Oh, yeah. Legend goes, if you walk over it while you're an undergrad, you won't graduate on time. So on every person's bucket list should be, go dance on the seal after you graduate. I actually have a friend that walked over it and he did graduate. He's, I think he's a, a special case. That doesn't happen. <laughs> Wait, also just a fun fact for all of you guys that are interested I or who on your bucket list is a Red Sox game. I was just one time sitting in the GSU, which is like the student union, and um, uh, this uh, awesome guy named John Badalino, who works for the Dean's, uh, Dean of Students Office, and he works with Dean Amor, who you're gonna meet in just a few minutes, um, just was walking around with a stack this big of Red Sox tickets for that night, and was like, do you guys wanna go to the game? And I was just like sitting there with my friend, and I was like, uh, yeah, sure. And he was like, okay, how many tickets do you want? And literally just like handed them to me, and then like walked away. And this was like fresh, the first semester freshman year, and I was like, Okay. <laughs> he was like, he was like, all you have to do is say hi to Dean Amor if you see him at the game. That was like my payment. And unfortunately, I didn't see him, but like I did have my first Fenway Frank and like watch the game and had the fir my whole first Sweet Caroline deal. So that's kind of just like things like that happen at BU, you know? All right. It looks like we have time for one more question. Um, I thought I saw something over here. Where? Sorry, I don't have my glasses on. Sure, right here. Right, the question was, was it ever difficult uh, when you were first trying to find your way around campus? Is, did you have any trouble navigating around uh, Boston or just the BU area at all? Um, BU, a lot of people, a bit, I'm also a tour guide through admissions, and uh, the biggest question I get is, this isn't a campus. And that's not a question, that's a statement. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's a big, th a big thing I get is, um, this, this isn't a campus, which is by no means true. Um, Basically, ComAv acts as, and the T basically acts as a backbone. And essentially, every building, I would say, between uh, to the left and the right of the T tracks is either owned by Boston University, being purchased by Boston University, or highly affiliated with Boston University. So you may see a CVS, you may see a flower shop, or you may see a barber shop, but they offer student specials. They're, ma they're mainly their only clients are students. Um, and so they gear all of their business towards students. Um, you never, you, there, you definitely know when you're on campus and off campus, um, because like I was saying, everything from Kenmore to kind of our West Campus Stuvie dorms um, are all of our academic buildings, our, our dormitories and things like that. Um, that being said, what it, answering your question, um, it's not hard to navigate really at all because it is all comm apps. You're either walking uptown or downtown, um, and then you can either hop on the shuttle or, uh, the, the, BU, the Boston University shuttle, which conveniently spells out bus, um, <laughs> uh, 
You all get it. It took me till sophomore year. <laughs> not kidding. Um, yeah, so it's, it's definitely not hard to navigate, especially because it is all ComAv. I think one really important thing, though, the second you get on campus, learn the acronyms. Because someone will be like, okay, we'll meet at GSU, and you're like, oh, I don't know where that is. Like, what are you saying? The George Sherman Union. So it's like really, really important to learn what acronym is for what building. Or in your schedule, it'll say you have class in STO, which I don't know if anyone's ever. Stone Science. Yeah, well, I <laughs> it took me up until the first day of class to figure that one out, wandering around. Um. Well, okay, also, that there's like very few buildings also that are have like a person's name or are named like the Stone Science Building. They're all like the College of Arts and Sciences, like the sociology department or like the sociology building or like the engineering building. And so you don't have those weird like halls that you have class in, you know, which I think also makes it easier because you like very quickly learn where all the colleges are. So if you know you have class in that college, it's, I don't know. I always think campuses that have like, I don't know, like Kenmore Hall, like what is that? Like why isn't it just called like the English department? I'm prone to get lost everywhere, so I have, like, GPS. Like, my mom, that was my mom's biggest fear, that I would get lost, <laughs> like, literally. And my phone was awful, so it always died on me. But one thing I can say is that orientation, hands down, gives you the foundation so you know at least some, like, the, the key the key places to go. A lot of people say that uh, the, the sit-go sign will become your North Star on, like, a late night. It... They're, they're right. Like, the sit-go sign actually, like, is, is perfect. And the Prudential Center is pr a pretty good landmark as well. But in terms of campus-wide things, um, uh, the orientation will offer that support. Um, FISOP as well. And if you um, participate in the Common Ambassador Program, you will also, like, be able to, like, do a lot of different cool things. For instance, we had the Come Games this year where a lot of students were able to get acclimated to different sites on campus in which um, my, uh, my tributes didn't win. But it's okay. Like, we're, we're still okay. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, you, you, you get confident in it. And um, I think that BU offers a lot of support to help people, like, get to know that this is their home. We All right. do fun things like comm games. <laughs> Find another school that does cool stuff like that. All right. right we have to be done now. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for the student panel. Please help me in thanking these guys. They were incredible today. <laughs>
Um, you have gotten a good sense of the place, I hope. I hope that what you've been able to do today is to get a sense of the verb and the vibe, the duende of this place. You've spoken to a lot of folks. You've seen a lot of things here. And I hope that you've been able to say to yourself, these are my people. This is where I need to be. And it's, it's, and what I want to do is to talk to you a little bit and, and kind of wrap it up a little bit, not just about the College of Communications, but really how we move this place throughout, how it works for us here at the university. This is the university, the Dead Center, the Geographic Center. It is Marsh Plaza. And I hope you had a chance today to walk through there. It is just due west of here. And at the heart of it all, we have a sculpture dedicated to Martin Luther King Jr., one of our alumni. And I like to just stand there. And I hope you have had a chance to do it. And if not, you got the afternoon to do it a little bit. And just watch the place go by. I love seeing the tea and the bikers and the skate rats. I love seeing uh, the protesters and people coming together. I love to hear people speak in ways that I just don't understand, but I know that there's a certain verb to what they're doing and what they're talking about. So this is a place where I think a whole lot of things go on, and I hope you've got a sense of that today. It's a residential campus. It's also a campus, I think, with this very cool urban vibe. And what's more, that urban vibe is the city. You heard that today. And despite anything that may have happened in the last few weeks, this is a city that moves on and moves forward. Proud that we are here at, the, at this university and in the city. This is also a place where there's a whole lot of art. And you are in a creative space, and I think you'll see the art here. But I'm talking beyond just what the conservatory here will offer. A lot of students creating things, a lot of students making the justifiable case to create, to make music, to sing, to draw, to paint, to make film, the kinds of things you'll do here, but you'll also do those outside of this place too. This is a place too, I hope you've seen throughout the day, where a whole lot of inspired thinking, not just on behalf of our students, but our faculty and people who've been here before. It's also a place too, where there is a lot of human expression through culture, a lot of culture in this space, a lot of organizations that do it, more than 500 as you probably heard, and they range the gamut, but that's the way that we express ourselves. This is also a place that, while it may have a big landscape, it certainly is a place that's about one-on-one -on -one transactions. It's a place where you will deal with faculty and other students who work with you on the kinds of things that are important. And it's a place with a great deal of history as well. I hope you saw some of that history today. I hope you ran into Anna Howard Shaw. Anna Howard Shaw might be one of the great suffrage uh, proponents in this country. Didn't hear a whole lot about her, but when you saw what she did, she was very important to it all. As a student, she was engaged with it. What's more, she was one of the first women to be a medical doctor in this country, too. And she laid down, I think, the DNA for us that brought us people like Edgar Helms, who, as a student, created Goodwill Industries as, a, as an extracurricular activity and gave us the, what we needed for service being important to what students do here at the university. So this is made possible by students from across our schools and colleges here, not just in our College of Communication. They come together to certainly make sure that this is a vibrant place. So we welcome you to Boston University and also, the, I think, the center of the universe here. Now, let me tell you a little bit about what we do and what I do and folks here do. We try to make sure you got a safe environment where you can find your way in the context of a vibrant community, and vibrant communities are important. With those communities, we try to work with students here to make sure that you've got the best communities for yourselves. We also try to make sure that you can solve your problems, and what's more, we want to make sure that we respond to your needs. Man, I, you know, is it my perfume? I mean, what, what is it? <laughs> we also want to respond to the needs of students as well. Now, I think that what we do here and what the student life context is about is providing you the opportunity to have meaningful, shared experiences with each other, both in classrooms and certainly outside of classrooms. Now, I mentioned that this was a residential campus, and let me tell you what I mean by that. You heard descriptions about the specifics. You've been talking to a lot of people about the specifics. These are your questions that you're going to have. In the student life context, here's the grand philosophy. Grand philosophy, I hope that you'll see, is that this has got to be a place that's more than just a place where you lay your head, more than just a place where you eat something. 
They should be experiences. These should be dining halls. These should be residences. These should be places where you can come together on a regular people with dip, on a regular basis with different people to connect with them, to be able to engage with people a little bit, to maybe even be pushed somewhere you've never been before and have a taste or an experience in ways you've never thought about. We also invest, as you heard throughout the day, in a number of activities for you to do so that they can add to the experience that you'll have here as a student at the university. Now, I put together a group of pictures. I'm a little nervous because this is a college of communication, uh, but I think I did a good job. A lot of music, a lot of pictures, a lot of words, and this will give you a sense of the excitement of this place. Now, some of you might be old timers like me, and this might be a little too fast for you. Close your eyes, you'll get over it. <laughs> So that just gives you a little bit of, I think, the vibe, the music, the pace, the variety. That's what it's about here in the context of student life. I think this is a place where you can come and get motivated. Now, in terms of how we'll communicate with you from here on, there are a few ways, and you've heard a lot throughout the day, and ways you can do that through communication. I hope the next time I see you is over the summer. Orientation is the next way, and you've heard that it's a good experience. Uh, we make sure that students are registered for their classes and that they get information that's going to be useful for you in terms of starting off here. Parents, you can also come to orientation as well, uh, and we have a separate program for you where we give you a lot of information, too, that will help you and help you engage and understand and meet each other, too. Uh, parents will live in that wonderful, luxurious uh, student village that you heard Kate talk about uh, that you will never be able to afford again, but you can see what it looks like for yourself. So orientation uh, starts up uh, in terms of registration in a week on May 3rd, so next Friday it'll start up. Uh, the other piece too is I hope that if you have questions, you also continue to go onto Facebook and put those in. As you know, we've got a number of folks who will try to make sure that they respond to you via Facebook. Take a look at BU Today. We put this out 
out five days a week. It's the university's journalistic piece where we try to give you a sense about the vibe of the place, the people, the places, the experiences that might make a difference for you. Look for some of those people and how you might find them throughout. And also make some comment on some of the comments section too. And you can find that at this URL. The other website I say go to is mine. You know why? It's the best one on campus, that's why. And besides, I got the mic, so it's mine. Um, you're seeing our new website. We'll be putting it up and premiering it, if you will, over the summer. You might be here when we throw our launch party as well. What, what I like about our site is this. It's not a website. It's a place where student voices can be seen. We try to put a lot of student content on there. So keep, keep tabs on it, and you can find it at this URL. Um, also, we love Twitter around here, as you probably have <laughs> come to find out. You can see a lot of unvarnished conversations, and certainly if you use that hashtag, we'll be able to keep track of it and get, get in touch with you and answer any of the questions that you might have. I hope that you will use the rest of the afternoon and the rest of your time here to really explore this place a little bit, see the university that I've seen in a student life context that I think is absolutely out of this world. Uh, enjoy, and when you get back here in the fall, I'm throwing a party for you. Stay well. Kate, it's yours. Okay, thank you, Dean Elmore. Um, all right, so at this point, we are done with our programming. Um, we have, at this point, open campus like I talked about earlier. Um, so just an update with that. The only, um, it lists all the things that we have there, but uh, just so you know, the ROTC uh, open house isn't happening. Um, they unfortunately had another event uh, today, so they aren't able to do that, but everything else is still going on as planned. Um, and you, again, can see a list of that on the back of your schedule. Uh, we will be doing tours of the building, 2, 2.30, and 3. Um, we will still be here at 3 o'clock, so if you all don't want to run over there right now, that would make your tours better. Uh, because it, just when they get too big, it can be a little bit uh, of a hassle, but for everyone involved. So take your time. Walk around the campus. We'll be here. Um, if you have questions, uh, again, please, all the ambassadors are still around. We will all be here until 3.30, 4 o'clock. Please uh, let us know what we can help you with. Um, we also have awesome com uh, t-shirts, the red ones that you've seen all the com ambassadors wearing today. Uh, you can get one of those. Uh, they are just for the students, sorry parents. Um, but you can get those outside. Um, and for all of our friends watching online, uh, if you'd like a t-shirt, uh, tweet at us. Um, we will also be posting more information about uh, those t-shirts on our website so we can um, mail those to you. Um, and it's the BU Com uh, Class of 2017 page. Um, I hope you all have been checking that anyway. But you can find all the info there. So that's all we've got for you guys today. Thank you all so much for coming and for making the special arrangements after last week. Um, it was so great to see all your shining faces. And I hope you guys had a great day. And I hope we'll be seeing you this fall. So.